Are you getting your house ready to sell this year? Well, this is the video that you've got to watch. We get questions all the time from our clients about, hey, we're getting ready to sell. What should I fix or what should I not fix? What's going to be the best return on my money? Well, that's what we're going to talk about in our video today. We can't wait to jump into it. Let's go. One of the biggest mistakes we see when people are preparing to sell is partial repairs. And so uh, that could look like someone that repaired some siding on the outside uh, and it's mismatched colors because they didn't do all of that one wall. Or um, they redid a bathroom, not all of the bathrooms. Or they redid or painted a room versus repainting the uh, whole interior of the house. And that just really sets things off. Um, people feel like, well, I was going to do this, but I wasn't going to get there. And, you know, it's just part of the process of preparing to go to sell because we're selling for a reason. And that's one of the things we share with our clients is we're selling for a reason. We don't want to over improve this property. We do want to prepare it for sale so we can go ahead and have the best experience possible going through the listing process, going through the showings and ultimately having a successful closing. But that's something that we see often is people want to go through and do a partial repair on something. Uh, and that is absolutely one of the things that we recommend uh, against uh, doing just a bathroom. I've only got enough money to redo a bathroom. So I'm going to do this one. Actually, it's probably better because if the whole house needs to be redone, then they're going to want to make their own changes. You're better off to save that money, keep that money and address it in the purchase price, uh, as opposed to, you know, spending, uh, your cash in improving the property. Okay. Next is doing a bathroom remodel. Now we touched on that earlier, but we want to make sure that, you know, if you're going through and the bathrooms need to be redone and we really Really recommend not over improving things, really making sure that it's in good condition. It's ready to deliver uh, to the next family, but give them room to make it there because that buyer is going to come in and say, Hey, this is a great blank canvas for what I have envisioned for this. So we don't want to guess too much um, at the future buyer and what they want. We want it to have be a clean canvas for them to be able to come in and make it theirs. Next, Along with the bathrooms is the kitchen. And very, very rarely do we ever recommend someone do a full kitchen remodel. Now kitchens, bathrooms, amenities, sell houses for sure. But if we've got a house where someone, most of it's older, we don't wanna go through and end up having a remodeled kitchen that's all the way redone. Because as soon as you do the first showing, you're gonna spend tens of thousands of dollars. And the first showing we're gonna have is they'll come in and they'll go, oh my gosh, we love the kitchen renovation. The appliances are amazing but we hate the countertops. Sorry. Thanks. Well, if we'd actually shown it and left it, you know, on the footprint in the style that it was, then the buyers could have come in and chosen their own uh, countertops. And that wouldn't have been of an, an objection that we ran into. Okay. Next is, do I go ahead and finish out my basement or my third floor or that room that's over the garage that wasn't finished out when I bought the house? And believe it or not, this is really surprising. It's actually, no, you don't want to finish that out. And we surprise people all the time. Now, we love guiding our clients to buying spaces that are unfinished because they are valuable. That is a flex space, an undefined space that can be whatever you need it to be in the future. We just leaving a little bit of a window could be a huge asset for whatever people may need in their home and having that unfinished space that, that overcomes a future objection of, hey, we love the house. Everything's perfect where it is, the price, but it doesn't have whatever. When you have that unfinished space, it can be that. And even in basements, we actually spend a ton of time talking to clients about finishing out basements. Basements are very complicated on the value and hyper local on what the value is. And the market of the moment determines how much basements are valued. That's why you've got to connect with your hyper local expert. Make sure you're knowing about the market of the moment and some of the standards and expectations in your hyper local market. We love talking about flooring and and flooring is where people can often make a big mistake and go through a huge expense when they're getting ready to sell and changing out all the flooring from what it was. Now, I'm not saying if you go in and the carpet is completely worn thin and is threadbare uh, and is actually walking on the subfloor that we're not going to recommend 
you know, redoing the carpet. But that's pretty easy. It's pretty cost effective and it's pretty time sensitive. It can happen quite quickly, very efficiently, and really have a big upswing. It'll smell nice. It'll look nice. It's brand new. And we even recommend this a little bonus. We recommend we have the installers roll out the little plastic walkways across the carpet to keep people on them and to protect your investment on that new product. So just a little extra while we're talking about flooring, but going through and taking out carpet and installing sand and finished hardwood floors it's absolutely just not necessary. Again, we're chasing a buyer that we think might want something when in the end, they may have a friend or cousin or brother that they want as a welcome home gift for them. Or they may not like hardwood floors at all. They're gonna take everything out and put in tile or any number of other things. We just don't wanna over improve on the chance that it may be something that a buyer may have an objection to. We just wanna present it in its best light, its best form, carrying forward and uh, not over improve the property. Okay. Another thing that we get asked all the time is, Hey, should I change out all the doors in my house? Now this is interesting here in our market. We have different doors. We actually have a lot of houses that face due West in middle Tennessee and get just beat down with that afternoon, spring, at summer, and afternoon sun. And especially if they're storm doors, it's literally a convection oven between those. And so people want to go through and change out their whole door. And actually, this is something that we get into all the time and have to look at. Sometimes we uh, actually just need to redo the door, maybe change out some of the hardware uh, to bring it forward and be ready. Because if it's an older house, it may be a superior quality product that was originally installed in my personal house. We have a door that's almost two and a half inches thick. It's a non-standard thickness of the door and it, it's it's an older door for sure. I live in an older house, but you know, that is a superior product than what we could get today. It would have to be completely custom milled. Now, if it, again, if it's been beat up or dinged, you know, some of the metal doors, you know, you may have to bring those forward and update those. But often we get into talking about some of the doors on the inside. People feel the doors and how solid they are, what kind of patterns they are. If you have a bunch of different mismatched interior doors, that may be a, an easier upgrade, but as long as they're regularly available. But then you get into the whole conversation of hollow core doors or semi-solid doors or solid doors. And again, that's a place where you've got to talk to your hyperlocal expert to find out whether or not it's worth spending that upgrade. But in general, we don't recommend people change out all the doors in their house. We do recommend that they get them ready and a simple fix like painting them. And one of my favorite, I'll give you another bonus. Okay. Like <laughs> a couple of y'all liked the bonus before. One of my favorite things that I share with clients is we actually get the doors ready for showings. And uh, again, this is our video, so we can do what we want with it. But we actually, one of our favorite things is to tell people to graphite and to use some WD-40 on all the doors in their house, get that fresh new key that you're having cut or the lockbox for the showings and run it through there a couple times. First of all, make sure it works. Sometimes people get brand new keys cut and don't ever check them, put them in the box. And then we're one of the first people on site and we find out the key isn't cut properly and we can't get into the house. Okay, let's talk about landscaping. Now we've seen people spend way too much money on some landscaping. This is something we don't wanna overdo by any means. We definitely wanna refresh the landscaping because the showing starts when people are pulling down the street, they've pulled onto Rosebud Lane and they're driving and they're looking for it, searching for the sign, searching for the street number in the mailbox. And so start with the landscaping for that curb appeal and that first approach impression. We really like to talk about that with our clients and stand out. Let's win the first approach impression because you want people jumping out of the car going, man, I'm excited about this one. Our current search standard is people are going through, searching through portals on their own, looking through emails and there are certain parameters that their agent has sent them. But man, it gets really exciting when you're actually on site and seeing those four or five that you've really picked out. Winning that approach approach is a big deal when you're down to the final five. So make sure that the approach looks good. Make sure the landscaping, the mailbox, the mulch is just right. But there is no reason to go out and spend tens and tens of thousands of dollars doing an entire landscape plan. Just freshen it, right? Freshen it, bring it forward. Another key factor around landscaping, do make sure that it's looking good have the yard cut fresh, you know, taking great care of the yard and make sure that it looks like it's been really well maintained. 
another system that comes up all the time when we're prepping your house for sale is the roof. Now, roofs can be very expensive, if not one of the most expensive things. And man, we deal with roofs in Nashville all the time because we have all different kinds of weather events. We have severe thunderstorm that comes through that'll have hail. We have tornadoes that come through, heavy rain. And then we also have winter snow that will sit on certain roofs, you know, for two or three weeks at a time. And in general, you know, our properties are not designed for that. So getting into the roof is a key thing and checking that out as you're prepping your house to sell because we don't hang out on our roofs. You don't hang out on your roof. And so that's where some of the most issues come up when their buyer does the inspection is around the roof. You don't necessarily uh, check the flashings, but most roofing companies will do a free or very low cost roof inspection. So it's a good idea to check with a chimney sweep, check with a roofing expert around the roof, because these type things can be very, very affordable um, and be good dollar return as opposed to doing an entire roof replacement. Now, occasionally we come into situations where we'll do a pre-inspection and we'll find that a roof is towards the end of its life, but it's in good working order. It may be 15, 16, 17 years old and have no storm damage. This is a huge thing because buyers and buyer's agents will go through and actually in their inspection say, hey, the roof is 17 years old. They only last 20, 25 years. We want you to do a whole roof replacement and being able to come back and say, hey, we actually had it inspected. We It was in good order and didn't have storm damage. Gosh, let's figure this out. That's a nice thing to kind of nip that in the bud early. Get out in front of that. Don't necessarily go do a whole brand new roof. Have it inspected. Get a standard of where it is and check with your expert about what the standards are and what you can do, what your options may be, and uh, what assets you already have. Take inventory of those assets as you're getting ready to go to market. Well, you've made it this far. Thanks so much for being here with us. We're going to share the two things that we recommend with our clients in our market when they're preparing to sell that absolutely, definitely get the return. Okay, are you ready? The first one is interior paint. Now this has a big impact um, when you go through the house. We definitely recommend neutral, light colors and fresh, you know, they can be there. The trim, all one color. You don't want to get, you know, stress out about a whole bunch of different colors or accent walls, but touching up the trim, having the ceilings come through paint can really change all the scratches and dings and dots, the minor cosmetics, you know, children or lifetime of traffic or pets have come through the house and really, you know, beat on the walls and what have you. It brings everything forward and a nice, clean, you know, canvas for this next homeowner. Um, it has a good smell, right? It has a good smell in the house, which can help, you know, show that it's been maintained well and prepped for the market. And just having fresh, clean trim and walls. Sometimes you run into popcorn and ceilings and going through and painting, you can have that removed. It really just brings everything forward. If you've changed out a light fixture that has the circle in there and now the, you know, the mount to the wall doesn't cover that whole circle and it's a different color. Well, all those things that create doubt in a buyer's mind, just fresh and forward. And it's also very cost effective uh, because people go, man, you could tell like they, they painted, they really, they really prepped this house to sell. So that's the big one. The next one that we recommend our clients do a pre-home inspection. Now, why do you say, Alex, why do you want, why do you want to know what's going on with the house when you are prepping a house to go to sale? Well, actually, it's just like this video. We want to be proactive and we want to get out in front of the things and deliver a great house to a great buyer and have a great experience across uh, the sale because there's a lot of phases when you're getting a house ready to sell. You have the pre, the during, and the post. And we really believe that in the pre, investing in a pre-home inspection before anyone else is involved, it's just the homeowners and their real estate professional, as well as the home inspector advising what to do. An example that I run into all the time and talk about um, is that we came across a, a floor joist that had been cut. And my client was selling a house that he'd bought new from a builder, and it was the first time it was being sold or resold uh, to a new owner. And uh, the home inspector was like, hey, one of your main floor joists on a 24 inch, 24 foot span has a cut like halfway out and there's a plumbing pipe that goes through it. And he didn't know that. I didn't know that because we didn't hang out in the crawl space. But that's actually pretty common that that can happen in, in new construction. But he didn't do an inspection 
when he bought the house the first time. And so actually by doing this, we saved him and had it fixed. We had a carpenter come through, structural engineer recommend the appropriate repair and a carpenter come through, sister those joists and actually resupport it in a great way. And when the buyer a home inspector came through, they were like, hey, you know what? They really did this right. And that became an asset to us in our process that we're like, hey, this is a good homeowner who's taken great care of the property and you can move in with great confidence and know that they've maintained it and keep on maintaining it for the future. Hey, if we're meeting for the first time, my name's Alex and I'm a residential real estate agent in Nashville, Tennessee, a fourth generation native Nashvilleian raising the fifth. And we are loving sharing things, our tips, tactics, and strategies that we're helping our clients all across Middle Tennessee and actually throughout the country and the world. But we're glad you're here. Help us with smashing that like button, subscribe, or drop us a comment below. That will be really helpful. It'll help us continue to grow our reach and help us meet other great people just like you so we can be their real estate resource in Middle Tennessee and across the country and the world for that matter. Thanks so much. So until we connect again, my name is Alex. I'm your friend in real estate in Nashville. Keep on keeping on and I'll see you soon.